Morning guys. So uh, this morning I shared a website about topography maps and it shows what the contours, what the lake looks like beneath the surface. Um, on our page, I never wanna assume that everybody knows how to do stuff. So I wanna take a little minute and I just wanna show you what those do and how you can use those to make your fishing a lot more effective. So I'm gonna go into my online teacher mode. So here's what we're gonna do. Let's take a look at some lakes around here and let's see what that shows us and how we can use it. So this is one lake that recently I saw some people asking about. This is Silver Lake over by the sand dunes. So if we look at a map of Silver Lake, we got a big blue nothing. It doesn't really tell me a whole lot about this lake. So sometimes, you know, when you get to the lake, what does it look like? Well, here's the satellite view. It's just a big old lake. And when we go fishing on lakes, we've got this massive expanse of water and often it's really hard to know where to start. Where do I go on this lake? What do I do here? So looking at this map, I can tell just a couple things. And I like Google Earth for this reason. As I look all along here, I see a fairly sandy, shallow area. It goes all the way around. I see docks that reach out pretty far. Okay, And as I go around, when I get to the side where the dunes are, I don't see that, which means that's really steep. It's a sharp drop off. So I can see that from this Google thing. But if I really want to see this lake, what I need to do is I got to get a topography map. So I'm going to click on this one. So this is what's going on. And a topography map, what it does, it breaks, the, it breaks the lake down and each line represents a depth change. Now every lake is different and I'm going to zoom way in. This one, every line is half a foot, at least where I'm looking. So this breaks it down. The darker area on this map is shallower. The lighter area is deeper. And here's what I can tell with this map. I'm gonna zoom back in. When the lines are spread out, when there's spaces between them, and I'm gonna look at this area right here. When I leave shore, I'm in one foot, I'm in two foot, now I'm in five foot, now I'm getting close. And this dark line stops at 10 and now below 10 feet is lighter. And now this is a gradual drop off. What I can expect to see here is I'm gonna have weeds out to about 10 or 11 feet maybe, and it's gonna stop, but it's a long, shallow area, okay? Certain fish like that, certain fish don't. If I'm fishing for bass, for example, I might hang out in the 10, 12 foot area and cast onto those weeds. A lot of guys like to go to this lake for walleye. Walleye don't really like that gradual drop, and when you hear guys say fish along the sand dunes, here's what they're looking for. See how mashed together these lines are? That means as I leave shore, and I'm gonna zoom in, it goes one, three, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, and I drop super fast. The lines close together means a very steep drop off. Some fish like that. So as I'm looking at this lake, I'm gonna zoom back out. At a glance, I can tell if I want to fish shallow and gradual drop-offs, I'm going to hang on the north, the east, and the south side of the lake. If I want sharp drop-offs, I'm going to do exactly what everybody says for walleye on this lake, and I'm going to fish along the dunes where it's dark. Okay, That's one piece of this. Okay? This lake is pretty uniform, but something else stands out to me. As I'm looking, I've got shallow over here, I've got deep over here, but I've got a couple spots right here and right here that look a little different. So I wanna focus in on them. Let's take a look at what we've got here. So on that west shoreline, I'm wrestling with my mouse today. I've got, okay, let's get rid of this. I've got a, this is really, really deep close to shore. Those lines are mashed together. This is really deep close to shore, but this blue area is 10 feet deep and it extends out into the lake. So what that tells me is if I want to fish maybe a decent spot for bass or pike that want quick access to deep water, this is a weedy flat probably. Less than 10 feet is probably going to have weeds. So I might fish this real hard here. I might troll this in maybe 10 or 12 feet of water. I might wander out to 14 or 15 and troll it. But this is a weedy flat. There's a bigger one just like it over here. So again, I've got lines mashed together up here. I've got a big weedy flat that comes out to 10 feet and then lines mashed together here. So this whole area is gonna be a big weedy flat. Lots of bait fish, 
probably a lot of bigger fish hanging on the outside of that, okay? This comes in close to shore and there's another tiny one right there. I could probably spend a whole day fishing one, two, three weedy flats surrounded by deep water. Now here's the thing. When you're looking for a lake, you're looking for things that are different. So here's what I, if I'm looking at this lake, I'm looking and saying, this entire east shoreline looks the same. It's pretty much gradual and it's pretty much straight. But over here, I have these one, two, three flats. I would probably spend my whole day targeting that. I would probably leave this entire east shoreline alone. I control this entire section or I can focus on this area, this area, and this area and have a higher concentration of fish because they're better spots. They're different. That's what you want to key in on fishing these lakes. A couple things, and I'm just going to draw this real quick. This lake doesn't have a key, but some do, and then we have symbols like this. I'm going to draw dots are logs. Okay. Lines like this are submergent weeds. That means they don't come up to the surface. And lines like this, they're like little T's. That means emergent weeds. That means they come up to the surface and float. This lake doesn't have it, but some of them do, and they'll have that structure for you. Other times, they'll tell you what kind of bottom it is, and that's kind of cool too. So let's, so let's go on. Hold on, my little one's here. Do you have a question? Yeah, can I color? <laughs> uh, you can color when I'm done, okay? Thanks, baby. All right, so that's Silver Lake. Let's take a look at another lake and I want to see how you do breaking this lake down. So we're going to go take a trip to Fremont and I hear a lot of guys, I have a lot of guys ask me about Fremont Lake and they post on this, where's a good place to go? And when you show up at Fremont Lake, this is what you have, a big blue lake. If you go to the satellite view, oh, this is showing me some things that are kind of interesting here. From the satellite, I can see, I'm going to zoom in a little more. Well, there's an underwater island right here. I've got a long underwater island, like a long, like a point almost, almost like an underwater hump, basically. I've got, this is crazy over here. I've got a huge point that extends way out into the lake. I've got another one right there. I've got another one right there. I've got an area of deep water here. I've got a deeper area somewhere between those points. So there's some irregularities in this lake. I would definitely key in on this area. I would definitely key in on these points and figure out what they look like. Now notice this shoreline across the top is very sharp looking drop off, not a lot of structure. I might not spend a lot of time there unless I was fishing for something that like that, maybe walleye, but these other structures are a lot more attractive to me. So let's see what it looks like when we look at the trope. The topography map tells me exactly what I was seeing on the other one. Let's zoom in. I've got an underwater island. You can see over here, it's three or four feet deep, but it's surrounded by deep water. That means this probably has weeds on top of it, and there's probably deep water all around. Everything I fish for would be there. Probably, you know, bass, pike, walleye, everything. So I might really troll hard around this area. Notice too that those lines are close together, so it's a sharp drop off. Where if you go over here, these lines, these lines are more spread out. So it's shallow, 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 one, two, three, four, five, and then boom, it drops sharply down to 38, down to 51 feet of water, okay? If I was looking at this, I'd go, okay, sometimes when you zoom out, it makes the close lines darker and it really helps you. I would definitely fish here. I would definitely fish this island. Here's another cool thing I'll show you. All right, so I've got shallow shoreline. I've got an island that's underwater four feet at the peak. Now watch this. It drops down to about 26 feet and then it comes back up, but it's deeper water on each side. This is called a saddle. And what a saddle is, is it's basically a lifted hump between two high points. You picture like a horse's saddle. This is the spot you'd sit. Saddles are good because fish can be in deep water and then they can come up into a little bit less deep water and still, you know, feed. They can also come up here and then go up onto the island or along the drop-off and feed there. 
they can feed along this thing. So that's something I would look at. Okay, my family's coming in bringing groceries, so it might get a little loud, but that's okay. All right, let's go over to this side of the lake, and what do you see? I see a huge flat, four feet deep. I trolled this once, and I was like, hey, I'm in 20 foot, I'm in 20 foot. Holy crap, I'm in four feet. All my, lies, all my lures are tangled. So I know now that this is shaped really odd, and it's hard to troll. But this is also good drop-offs with weeds. Probably this entire top is covered with weeds, and then it drops off all around it, okay? This area is pretty deep here, and then you've got another point that's shallow. This area drops down to about 15 feet. Now that I know what I know, I could, for example, focus on this bay, and I could troll, you know, lures that dive down 8 feet in 11 or 12 feet of water, and I could just cruise here and go around this basin, I know I'm not going to hit weeds. I'll be fishing weed lines this entire way, and I control that whole little loop. I could go into this thing and do this. Whoops. I could go in here and do the same thing. Okay, remember, lines spread out wide apart means a really gradual drop like this. One, two, three, four. But this is like several hundred yards that that drops in. Areas where they're close together means a very sharp drop. You're moving a short distance, but that depth is changing a lot. Okay, let's zoom back out. So anyway, when I look at this, what I see, I've got a point, I've got a point, I've got kind of a big flat, and I've got these islands over here. If I was fishing Fremont Lake, I'd probably go here, here, here. I would cut straight across, I'd skip all of this, and I'd go straight out of those islands and hit those islands. That cuts off, I want you to see how important that is. Look how much lake I'm not fishing. I'm not doing any of this area up here. I'm not fishing the middle anywhere because it's 70 feet of water. There's nothing that I fish for there. So I'm literally going one, two, three, these areas, and then jet across, check those islands. And I can focus my attention on spots where there's going to be the most fish. Okay? I'm going to do one more lake, and I'm going to break this down. These are fairly simple lakes. This one is a complicated lake. Many of you guys fish Muskegon Lake. Let's check it out. Okay, this is Muskegon Lake, okay? Now there's a lot going on on this lake. Because the lake is so big, I'd probably prefer to zoom in and follow some stuff. But I'm gonna start with some really obvious things. This is, I think this is black buoy. This is a huge weed flat. It's right off of Bear Lake Channel. And I can tell by looking at this, this whole area, I mean, it's like one and two feet deep. All along here is a big weedy flat. Okay, if I want really, really weedy and shallow, that's a decent place to go. Over here, this drop-off is very sharp because it's so dark. Okay, over here, that drop-off's a little more gradual. Now, a lot of guys talk about, hey, perch fishing off Bear Lake early in the spring. And I want to show you why that works. Because you've got, you've got an island here. Let me see here, 15, 16. So you've got, in one sense, you've got some shallow water reaching into it. You've got this deep hole, though, and it's really good drop-offs going into places where they spawn. So this hole is probably where that's happening. Um, as I zoom out of this lake, I want to look at some other things. A lot of fishing happens up in Snug Harbor. What I can tell about Snug Harbor is this area is a very gradual drop-off. It's really sharp up in this corner. Over here, just outside of that, I've got... Okay, this is underwater. This is a little weird. But I can tell right here I've got odd structures. There's shallow areas that reach way out. There's deep areas around it. For me, that's worth checking. Okay, I'm going to zoom way out again. Again, Muskegon Lake is so big, you have to zoom in to really catch things. Okay. If I'm scooting along, so I'm going from Snug Harbor, and now I'm over here in this end of the lake, and I'm looking at something else. I got A lot of guys would say this is off of 2nd Street, I think. I see these brown structures. These used to be docks, but they're not there anymore. But there's really odd structure here. I've got a point, it comes in, it's deep, it's shallow. There's a point, it comes in, it comes out, it comes in, it comes out, it comes in, it comes out, it comes in. And those are all little points. If I was spending an entire day at Muskegon Lake, I might just focus on this whole area right here. That's really worthwhile. Okay, some other things I can tell. 
This area's got a, let's see right over here. I know this is where the river comes in. This drop off is pretty distinct. Okay, it's really sharp. There's a deeper hole over here when you're getting towards um, the consumer powers plant. But things that you can tell from these maps, remember close lines together, like right here, we've got a point that comes to three, four, five feet, but it drops way down to almost down to 20s and 30s right next to it. So that tells me this is probably weedy, sharp drops all around it. The way that you use this, understanding the season and what you're fishing for. For example, if I'm bass fishing in the spring, I know bass like water that's less than 10 feet deep, they want it to warm quickly. I would probably focus hard on Snug Harbor, okay? It's relatively shallow. It's in the northwest corner of the lake, which warms the fastest, okay? Um, I happen to also really like boat canals and I've noticed, hey, there's this area back here, back in the marina, and this is all pretty shallow. That loads up with panfish and bass in the spring. It warms quickly. As I look on Bear Lake, Bear Lake is all pretty much 10 feet and less, okay? I notice that's probably got bass through it in the spring. I see that there's a little canal here. That way I would check. It's different if I'm trolling walleye, you know, and I want to troll weeds. Maybe it's the late fall and you're catching walleye in the, along the weed edges. A lot of guys troll this and it's because it's a gradual drop and the weeds will stop at a certain point and you, it's easy to troll. Drop offs that are really close together like these, it's really easy to get out of your target depth. So like if I want to stay in 12 feet of water, I can wander pretty much a little bit to the left and right as I'm going and still be in 12. If I do that here, if I wander a little shallow, all of a sudden I go from 12 to six and all my lures are tangled, or I go from 12 to 20 and my lures aren't in the strike zone. So trolling drop-offs that are steep takes more attention. Okay. Just for grins, I'm gonna, so this is a website that I posted. I'm gonna go, let's see. We're gonna stroll down the lakeshore. There's Spring Lake. There's Port Sheldon. Let's take a look at Makatawa. Okay, so I'm at Lake Makatawa. Let's zoom this baby in, see what we see. Okay, hey, it's not just a giant body of water. There's a lot of points and stuff that I need to be aware of. I can see that this is a big shallow flat here. This is a big shallow flat. So if I'm trolling, for example, I'm following a contour. I'm doing where, this, where my curse is going. Around this, I'm staying out of that flat. I'm maybe trolling into here. Maybe I skip across and start doing this flat. Okay, but these contours are very important. If I want the deepest point, it's gonna be right around here. Okay, I can see there's a point here. This shoreline is pretty, dro it drops off pretty quickly, quicker than over here. These are spread out. These are close together. Okay, I can see as I go this way in the lake, There's kind of a deeper channel in the center. It's about 20 feet deep. There's a point that's worth fishing. Here's some flats. Here's a little point. We get into this area of the lake and check this out. You've got 12 and 15 foot of water, but you've got like a two foot flat on top. So this is gonna be super shallow, but it drops off with deep water all around it. That can also be a good spot. Lake Mac actually has a lot of structure points. You can even look at the shoreline and sometimes that will tell you what's going on. If there's a point of land sticking out, pretty sure that point continues underwater. If the shoreline is very flat going into the water, pretty sure it stays pretty gradual going in. Some shorelines might have a hill that goes in the water. Pretty sure that shoreline continues to drop sharply. So I'm going to post this. Feel free to post comments on this.